My name's Martin Royds and Jilma Tong's two kilometres from Braidwood. So on Jilma Tong we run beef cattle. Got a, an egg operation mainly to control weeds and fertilise the property. And we've harvest native grasses, we've got yabbies, truffles and other small enterprises. So Jilmatong's a granite-based soil. It was cleared here in probably the 1860s. It, uh, my grandfather first started off with about 600 acres. It's now 435 hectares. From what I can see, the 1900s was when the landscape really started changing. From the 82 drought, where we bared the land and it took a while to recover, to now excessive changes in temperature and, and rainfall and dry periods. And these fires and droughts and floods are seriously making it difficult to farm in this area. And for me, that crossroads was about 1985. And um, it took me five years to figure out a way of getting out of that. And I've been fortunate to get hold of some of the best people I think on the planet to um, get insights onto how to work with the land to build resilience into it. I call this Peter Andrews Weir. He came here in 2005 and said, if I put a weir in here, I'll never have a water problem again. At that stage, this was part of the erosion gully running right down the system, draining the water and fertility off the farm. And for very little money, we put a weir in here and I actually put 14 weirs down the erosion gully system and they filled up in the first rain event in the middle of winter. And since then, they've been full of water. This, in 2019, when the Shoalhaven River was dry, this still, it had dropped that much, but basically it was full of water. And the reason is because it's not the water we see here this has actually slowed the water coming out of the entire landscape. And so most of my water is getting stored up there in a rain event, and then it slowly trickles in here clean. And so I've constantly got water coming in. The water plants actually, the, the design of these is that they can fold over and protect the wall if you get a really big flood. The principal things you're looking at doing is slowing the water down. First, the easiest one is to stop the erosion gullies draining the system. Then you go higher up the slope and put contours around so you're catching the water, spreading it out. We've got a double contour system. The first one spreads the water out. The second one's got your compost heaps in them. And that then fertility and water leaches down through your farm. Then you've got your motor dams at the bottom harvesting the fertility, the grass growing really well, the cattle taking that back up. The whole thinking is all the time, how do I get fertility back up to the top of the hill and then let gravity bring it back down again? So this is a, a standard dam. It's been here for 30, 40 years. It's been cleaned out a couple of times in dry times. We used to throw the mud over the wall and it just sat there inert. So instead of doing that, we've put that in smiley faces up the hill to catch the rainfall when you, you've got a rain event. And then we also put in this moat here. So the water comes down, fills in there, settles, leaves the fertility there that then this can utilize and grow and the cattle can eat that and take back up to the top of the hill where it's cooler in summer, warmer in winter. So we've swung our fences around now to go up the slope. And so we've deliberately planted the trees up on top of the hill. When I first came here, most of the trees had died. And so we started planting trees for initially windbreaks. You know, cold winds come th through here in winter, blew away the soil and they affected the stock. Once we started planting them, then we found the benefit was biodiversity. So not only did we put trees, we put shrubs and all that, because by having birds in there, they came out and ate the insects that were causing problem in the pasture. Another benefit is that they actually can start altering the climate in a local scale, getting more moisture on the grass uh, through dew, slowing water down if you've got them across on the contour. I see that as my haystack in a dry time as well. So I've put the trees now a lot sparser and try and have 
deciduous trees as well. So in summer they're creating shade, in winter they're letting the sun in and they actually drop the leaves and you see the stock eating them. When you do put the stock in underneath, they actually stimulate the trees and the trees seem to grow half a metre. It's just the soil comes to life and feeds the whole system. The other principal thing that has changed everything the most is using your stock as harvesters. And managed correctly, I think they're one of the principal tools that I've used to turn this farm around in changing the pasture structure by the timing of grazing. Our principle is you chew a third, trample a third and leave a third so it can recover really quickly. So this paddock, we used to keep the grass really short. It was compacted, the stock were on it all the time. And so it was really hard. And now it's the beautiful crumbly soil. It's got high carbon levels in it. There's fungi and bacteria in there, there's worms. And it's getting fed all the time by this, this mulch that the cattle have pushed down onto the grass and the worms will come up and take that back down and then the fungi and bacteria grow in that and so that's feeding the soil and consequently when we look at that satellite imagery I'm warmer in winter because this is alive and functioning and it's armoured the soil so if we get a hailstorm or a big rain event you know the rain's not going to hit bare ground it's going to hit and soaks in just changing your thinking from having the grass like this to letting it grow. So we're sort of heading into winter and mid-autumn and the grass is rapidly growing and um, you probably found that would have been back down in there when the cow chewed it off and so that's growing that much three days. And this is using energy out of the roots to, to grow that quickly in three days. So it's taking money out of the bank that I've built up. And if I let it grow a bit longer, then it's putting back into the bank again. So constantly thinking, how can I create a positive feedback loop? How can I feed the microbes? How can I feed the soil? How can I get these big solar panels produce lots of grass for my cows? Once you seem to get over at least seven species of grasses with some with tap roots, some with the multiple hair roots, there's something that happens down in the soil that everything comes to life. We've done transects and we've got 80 different herbs and grasses. Why do you need that? Well, different times we go into a dry time and there's some grass that can harvest more moisture out of the atmosphere and be green in a drought. When they've got heavy frosts, there's other grasses that can still grow in that. When the fires came through, they burned everything. It's three years of drought. There was nothing alive before the fires. And suddenly I had green plants growing up like this. And you're going, where did they get the water from? They made water out of dry soil and these plants grew. Why that happened? Clearly having the biodiversity there, you've got something that's going to grow in any time. You've got the soil life. Um, but I think there's a lot more going on there than we, we know yet. Farming for the last 5,000 years has always been focused on how much we can get from the land. And what I've learned from the Aboriginal people that I've met is they give to the land to get back. The big thing in holistic management is changing thinking. Changing from how many cows have you got to what's your goal. Now I can see that everything I do is actually positive. It's building biodiversity, it's building soil carbon, it's building resilience into my landscape for fire, drought, flood. I've got multiple enterprises building up on the farm, so you know I've got an economic stability. And yeah, I see um, you know, a bright future. And I get people who come here from the city who are feeling in despair about the planet and they seem to go oh wow this this really is a solution we can really have healthy food healthy landscape healthy people and healthy finances why wouldn't you want to do that